Yeah, it just kind of doesn't make a lot of sense why someone would pour $4 billion when you guys have liabilities sort of as high as you do. Can you talk a bit about the marked marked market statements you were making around solvency? You're making some pretty outrageous statements about like FTX, you know, had had the money when a lot of it was Serum, FTT, these tokens that you know you can't sell in those amounts and you know that would completely crash the price that can't support that kind of selling. Were you kind of deliberately misleading people there? So I what I can say is I was just thinking about them in terms of well, uh, you know, in terms their mark price was just whatever their market price was at the time. Obviously, I was cognizant of the fact that the, the, the market price isn't necessarily what you could sell a large amount of, of something for, but I also massively misjudged that discrepancy there. What, what do you mean you massively misjudged it? Because you knew sort of roughly the percentage of, of Serum and FTT you held and you knew the, the trading volume. I mean, you are a smart guy. You're a professional trader. You know, there's no way you make a simple mistake like that, right? Like, how, how, how's that even possible? I mean, it was a pretty big misjudgment and mistake that I made and a pretty embarrassing one. But I was thinking of it internally in the context of standard market environment. And obviously that still means, you know, substantial impact, but it's a different scale than what you would see, what we did see in the market crash that happened without selling, without liquidating the position. There was a much larger than 50% market crash in a few day period with very little bid side liquidity. Obviously, history has said again and again that those events are possible, those very correlated market crashes and not just very correlated market but, crashes in those instruments, but ones where hedges don't end up working fully. But we all. don't we don't even need to to have this market crash for the statement about mark to market uh, accounting making no sense, right? And you just said that yourself. Even with with standard movements, right? If you tried to sell the amount of serum or FTT that you had on the books, you wouldn't have gotten half. You wouldn't have gotten a quarter of what you put on your books to investors. And so the question is, is like. We know that you're not, the, the problem is, is like every time it comes to this hard point, the answer seems to always be, I made an embarrassing mistake. But at what point are you gonna say like, no, I'm a smart guy, right? You were, you were at the highest levels of this entire industry. You were the guy to go to, the smartest guy in the room, right? It's hard to believe that you made this many embarrassing mistakes. One embarrassing mistake, I get it. But you're just, everything's an embarrassing mistake. At least tell us that you knew that the mark to market made no sense. The way that I was thinking about risk as far was starting with mark to market and then adjusting down effectively from that. Obviously, that means that there should be a real buffer because of exactly what you're saying. That buffer should have been a lot larger than I was thinking. But, of. but you never went down from risk from there. And you said publicly, you said, FTX is solvent, other views may differ. Well, there is no other view on it. There's the fact of how markets work and you were making public misleading statements. It wasn't one time you did this. You continue to make misleading statements about it after people have, had given you pushback. So Sorry, which, which time are you talking about here? I think it was in one of your follow-ups about the what happened. You said something about other views may differ. Oh, that was FTX US, was it not? I'm going to look it up real quick. I got a quick question about um, Dan Friedberg, your chief regulatory officer. I, I, I don't feel comfortable like talking about other people without getting their sign off on that. So I, I think there's a limited extent to which I'm going to be willing uh, or, or feel comfortable speaking on others behalves. No, that's totally fair. And I don't want you to speak on his behalf, obviously. I want you to get share your unique perspective on the situation. Um, just like the same, I might ask a question about Caroline Ellison, but I only could expect right. your position on the uh, situation. So kind of the, um, the, the situation there is obviously this is sort of a tale of two stories about how FTX failed. One is like a lack of regulation, a lack of clarity, a, kind of just this thing that accumulated over time. The other one is, of course, a story of fraud. Of course, we have to look at who were the adults in the room. 
One of the adults, obviously, was Dan Friedberg, chief regulatory officer. Um, I'm sure you're aware he was behind the um, ultimate bet scandal where he gave players God mode in a poker game where people could see um, the hands. And he actually like basically conspired with Russ Hamilton to hide that. So does that suggest something about your intention that you hired a guy that basically one of his biggest achievements was hiding fraud? Um, can you explain sort of your thinking? I know you don't want to talk about him. Can you explain your thinking about why this would be the guy you choose as the chief regulatory officer? Um, I, we had a number of people uh, in the legal department, uh, maybe our fastest growing department. We had a number of outside law firms as well. Dan was obviously one of the people who had been working uh, you know, for FTX for a while. He was, yeah, he's the chief guy. He should have caught some of this stuff, you'd think in theory. Well, when you say he's the chief guy, you know, we also had general counsels. We had we had other positions as well. But I, I can't speak to what other people's, what they thought or knew or were intending. Our, you know, legal and regulatory team had an enormous task in front of them. We were looking to get licensed and regulated in dozens of jurisdictions at once. We did end up doing that. That was an unbelievably large undertaking, which I think took up most of the time. Most of our legal and compliance departments, in retrospect, probably took up too much time. But at the end of the day, I was CEO, and that means that at the end of the day, it's on me to make sure that we have people who are in charge of all of the important things. And I did that for some of the areas. I failed to do that for others. And but why'd you choose him specifically? I mean, obviously you could have chosen a lot of different lawyers to go with. And I understand you had multiple lawyers, but if this is if this story of FTX is largely a failure of regulation, a failure of controls at an organization and your chief regulatory officer is Dan Friedberg, the question is, well, maybe this wouldn't have happened if you hadn't put a guy like this in front of this. I'm not obviously saying it's his fault solely, but I'm just asking sort of what was the thinking behind putting this guy in charge? Because it seems like you couldn't pick a less qualified candidate if you want to get actual regulation in the room. I'm pretty, con I, I didn't say this is a failure of regulation. And we did an enormous amount of work on, you know, getting licensed and regulated. We're licensed in more jurisdictions than I think any other exchange was. Um, I think it was absolutely a failure of oversight of risk management. In retrospect, I would have viewed the core dues and things I, I needed to make sure of more so than anything else very differently than I did. But from a coming license perspective, we did do quite a bit there and were um, able to accomplish that in, you know, in a fairly short period of time. I'm not sure that I completely agree with the premise of that framing. I'll just say that like the people who work with FTX, like I have enormous respect for uh, most of them and they did enormously valuable work. They didn't do all the work. Obviously there are really important things that didn't get done, but that's on me as CEO to make sure that there are people who are doing all of the important things because there's way too much to do. We're doing way too much as a company for any particular person to be expected to be definitely on top of even of some important things given how many other important things they also had to be dealing with at the time and by the way i do apologize for, i am fairly late at this point for next thing i do have to to hop off sam thank you so much uh, for your time and coffeezilla and other you know speakers thank you so much marty everybody thank you so much